Hey there, boaters. I'm Captain Stacy Hanrahan, and welcome to Monday's episode of Boaters TV. First up, our captain's caption photo was provided by Nick Jean. We'll reveal the caption of the day at the end of the show. Now in Bosun's Locker, Southern Boating Magazine's Captain Rob Hanrahan is here and homing in on safety. Okay, thanks Captain Stacy. Your boat's EPIRB has the potential to save your life, making it the most important electronic gadget on your boat. In our August issue, Southern Boating contributing editor Frank Lanier shows us how to make sure this crucial piece of electronics stays in working order by regularly testing and inspecting it. Now, if you have a Category 1 beacon, the type that automatically deploys, make sure it's located in a place where it can easily float free of the vessel and carefully inspect the hydrostatic release unit. Of course, if you have a manually activated unit, make sure it's mounted in a location that's easy for everyone on board to see and grab in case of an emergency. Check the battery expiration date. Typically, batteries last for five years and should only be replaced by an authorized service center. Testing your EPIRB is a simple one-step procedure, but read the manual. The last thing you need is the sound of a search and rescue helicopter hovering over your marina looking for your false distress call. If you happen to accidentally activate the rescue mode, turn off the EPIRB immediately and call the nearest Coast Guard station to cancel that false alert. Frank reminds us that all EPIRBs coded in the U.S. must, by law, be registered with NOAA. Registering is easily done online or through the mail. Instructions are included in your manual. It's important to know that beginning February 1, 2009, emergency calls from the older 121.5-243 MHz units will no longer be monitored. So if you've got one of those older beacons, this summer is a good time to upgrade to a 406 unit. To read Frank's entire article, pick up a copy of Southern Boating's August issue or register for our virtual magazine at www.southernboating.com. Stacy, back to you. Thanks, Rob. Now let's see what's splashing around in nautical news. If you're a boater who cares about the environment, Interlux Yacht Finishes wants you to prove it. Their Waterfront Challenge is a national competition that will award people for improving their local waterfront, be it a lake, river, or ocean. Simply get a small group together and organize a project. A group can be anything from a yacht club to a family of three or more. Projects can be as simple as cleaning up a beach to something more involved like rebuilding a handicap accessible dock. Applications are being accepted now through November 5th for grants that will be awarded at the Miami International Boat Show next February. Seven regional grants of $5,000 each and one grand prize grant of $25,000 will be awarded by a six-judge panel. For more information and to sign up for the Waterfront Challenge, go to www.wfchallenge.com. Next up in yada yada yada, luxury boats on a charitable voyage. Luxury yachts are most commonly used to transport the super rich to exotic locations. But now one organization is using these vessels to transport goods to those in need. San Diego-based Yacht Aid Global was founded by Mark Druillo. Mark spent 20 years at sea, traveling the world on luxury yachts. And from Cabo San Lucas to the remote islands of Indonesia, he continually was impressed by the helpfulness of the local people, no matter what their economic situation. So Mark became inspired to help the world's coastal communities. He plans to use privately owned yachts to deliver school supplies and other goods to undeveloped areas in Central and South America. Charitable yacht owners can use their vessel's extra space to carry and deliver the supplies. Now, don't have a yacht but still want to help? The organization will gladly accept donations, school supplies, clothing, toys, food, and of course, cash. For more on the organization, go to www.yachtaidglobal.org. And now it's time to announce this week's poll. Here we go. The hardest boating skill to master is chart navigation, repairs, docking, using electronic gadgets, setting the anchor. 
To vote, simply go to www.theboaters.com. Now it's time to reveal Stacy's TheBoaters.com celebrity profile pick of the day, which is Kathy Lewis and her 22-foot Mark Twain, Kathy's Fantasy. Kathy has been boating all her life. Her grandpa got her dad into it, and her dad got her into it. It looks like Kathy continues to pass on the tradition. Welcome to the boaters, and congrats on your celebrity status. And finally today, the captain's caption of the day is, Wow, did you see the size of those? <laughs> by Darren Hurl. <laughs> and that'll do it for this episode of the Boaters TV. See you back here on Wednesday.